Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Open your Bibles to the book of Galatians, chapter 6. We're going to jump right on in here. Hallelujah. Got to sing that song about the heart of worship. I didn't want to kind of lose that spirit. Uh, God wants us to have a focus on him. Can you say everybody? God wants us to have a focus on him. Sometimes we lose the ability to balance the need to teach certain things in the Bible without overemphasizing them to the point we lose focus on Jesus. See, well, you know, teaching prosperity, teaching healing, teaching, um, you know, grace, teaching faith, teaching different things in the Bible are all important Bible subjects and things we need to teach. But sometimes we can get to the point we get so busy teaching about them we forget about the one that, that is the center of all of that. God wants you to prosper so you can establish his covenant. Why? Because he loves people. He wants to reach more people. You know, there are people in, in different nations that need Jesus. Actually, in this nation, we need Jesus. I mean, uh, we, we, we decided to poll um, either Wednesday or Thursday night, new pew poll out, that, the, that, the, uh, that more people now don't believe in God than ever before in America. Now, we've been spending the last 20 years trying to get cute and be seeker-sensitive and seeker-friendly and all this stuff, make the church palatable to everybody. We don't want to preach, you know, repent. We don't want to preach, you know, something that will make everybody, anybody feel bad. We'll make oh, everybody just go out feeling hunk-a-dory when they come to church because we don't want to do anything that would make them feel like, you know, that they're not just wonderful. And we, never, we don't preach repentance. We don't preach holiness. We don't preach living right. We don't preach it because, and what's happened? More people don't believe in God. We didn't. We didn't. We haven't gained. We've lost. Jesus did say, "Go, go, go!" Say, "Repent," for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. Somebody say, "Ouch!" Anyway, I want to talk to you this morning about an important subject, and, and, and this kind of the reason it's tying into what I, the, that song this morning, the, returning to the heart of worship, is is when we lose our proper focus, we lose the incentives, and we lose the internal. Um, joys that are necessary to maintain a steadfast walk. When you start going through mechanical motions and get out of the, get out of relationship and go through motions, you'll lose your heart about something. There's a lot of people who come to church or come to church or come to church, and at some point in time, something happens. They get offended. Somebody talks in their ear, and they get offended because of the offense of somebody else, or they get mad about something, or the you know, pastor preached a sermon they didn't like. Hang around. I'll preach one. That you don't like. Guarantee. I mean, might, might get you this morning. All right? I mean, you know, we, we, we say things that the Bible says and people don't like it. You know, they'll get mad. And what happens is when you lose relationship and go into mechanics or principle or just doing it because it's, you got to do it this way, you'll lose your heart. You'll get weary. And you can only go so long in your own strength in a state of weariness before you fall. You cannot make it on your own. I'm a self-made man. Hogwash. One old Texan say Tommy Rot. Bunk. You know, that's just garbage. You can't make it on your own. You're not a self-made man. Hello. Uh, 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 Atlanta Braves guy. Ted Turner said one time, he said Christianity is a crutch for the weak. Oh, glory to God. He's right. Because when I get to my weakest, the Lord takes over his dunamis, comes on me, and I win, praise God. Amen. Amen. Let's read Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9. Uh, we'll read it out of the King James, and then I'm going to give it to you out of a couple of different versions. It would really help if I got to Galatians chapter 6, verse Seven, here we go. Be not deceived. All right, here's a command. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. All right, we have two things here. Don't get deceived. God is not mocked. What's the deception? God gets mocked. God doesn't mean what he says. No, God's not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also, what? Reap. Now, God, the word says, don't be deceived. God's not mocked that what a man sows, he shall reap. Now, you got people running around saying, don't matter what you sow, you're not going to get reaped because God's going to give you blessings anyway. 
And they, and they put it and call it grace. They call it grace. It ain't grace. That's a lie. It's a deception. It don't matter if I, if I don't give. It don't, God's going to financially bless me anyway. That's not what the Bible says. Well, if God showed me. God didn't show you something his Bible don't say. Are you here? You're not going to get messages from God that counterman what his word says. It don't work that way. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. How long? That's a long time. How long is forever? Longer than you can figure out. Amen? Longer than you've been here and longer than you'll ever be here. All right. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that shall they also reap. And then he goes on and he even clarifies this. He that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. I can fornicate and it don't matter. That's sowing to your flesh. Now everybody in here bobblehead. Okay? We're all bobbleheads this morning. Because that's... But I heard a message from somebody that said, I'm under grace, and it just doesn't matter what I do because I'm going to get blessed anyway. And, 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 and I, that's a, I don't even believe that. He just says, so, so, now, now, Paul wrote this. He okay, called Paul the preacher of grace. Paul wrote this and said, he that sows to his flesh shall of his flesh reap what? Corruption. Corruption. Why? Because God's not mocked. Don't be deceived. God's not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. He that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap what? Life everlasting. Now here, see, I, lo I love the way God does things. He used Paul to write a lot, but it was still the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. God's saying, now don't sow to the flesh because you're going to get corruption. But then he didn't just leave you there. It wasn't just don't give to the flesh. Now, if you'll sow to the Spirit... What you are going to sow, what you're going to reap, is life everlasting. Or things that pertain to life. Things that come out of the kingdom of life. Amen? Verse 9. Let us not be weary in well-doing. Let me tell you something, folks. We're in a time when the pressures of the world can make you weary. Hello. I mean, you're busy. Life's busy. You know, uh, I said this morning over in Winston, I mean, you, uh, you get tired of rowing upstream. Are you here? Now, I've, I've gone whitewater rafting a number of times, and, and one thing we do, if, we, if you go on the Watauga, it's only got one class three rapid, but it's a good rapid because it's a surfing, what they call a surfing rapid. And what happens is the water, when the water comes over the rocks and it dips down, it creates what they call a hydraulic, and it sucks back. Okay. So they call that a hydraulic on, on, on rivers. And uh, you, you can go down the river. When you go, go through the rapid, you paddle over to the side. And, and then you turn your, your, your uh, kayak or your funyak around with the funyak's an inflated kayak. Turn around facing upriver over in the eddy where the water's not moving. And then you paddle. And you paddle into where the river is coming over. And so when that hydraulic comes in, and then it comes out over the top, it's pushing down river again. you got to paddle real hard to get over the upstream to get into that hydraulic. Okay, and when you get into it, you can take your paddle and sit there like this and just sit there. And I've, I've gone, I've, I've taken it and you just push it just a little bit so it pushes you to the right and gone all the way across the river just sitting in that hydraulic. It's really fun. But the thing is, paddling upstream, I am telling you, you paddle, because that river, that water's moving and you're trying to get up to get beyond the upstream flow, the downstream flow, you're going upstream. And a lot of Christians have been living their life and they're, and they're constantly paddling upstream, constantly paddling upstream. You know, they've been dealing with this. They've been dealing with that. They've been dealing with the, with, with, uh, with the world. They've been dealing with other Christians. They've been dealing with the church. They've been dealing with crazy doctrine. They're dealing with this. And that. I mean, they've, they've been attacked sickness. They've been attacked financially. You know, and you can get weary. Now, I've seen guys get there, and they're trying to get up, and they just, they, they, they can't get it up, and they finally give up. And you know what happens as soon as they give up? The current turns their thing around takes them downstream. The wrong, it's going the wrong way. So they're trying to go. Going, it's, and I'm telling you, you're paddling against things in the world. And if, if you give up, you're going to go downstream with the world. Now, you're not left hopeless. Say, I'm not left hopeless. Somebody say, I got Jesus. Hallelujah. I am telling you. So God says, so what? So what? Don't sow to the flesh. Don't give up. Don't get weary. Sow to the spirit. Amen. What happens when you sow to the spirit? Sears and Roebuck ships you a 250 horsepower outboard motor. You put that on the back of your boat, baby, and it don't matter which way the river's flowing. Right. Yeah, right upstream. Are you here? 
<coughs> you can get out there with it. <laughs> Me and Nathan have gone out on the lake over there in Jamestown, you know, and uh, his battery died. We got to get a new battery. Got to get a new charger because we bought the wrong kind of charger. It, it killed the battery. It wasn't a deep cycle. And, uh, but we went out on the lake. We paddled all over that lake. My last, I mean, your, your shoulders are hurting. Your back's hurting. And uh, son, go ahead and fish. I'm going to rest. <laughs> I'm tired. Been all over this lake. But when you got that little, even little trolling motor with a battery. Mm, just going all over the lake. Just, just, and just basically how fast that little trolling motor will take you. But Christians, believers, we have been battling things. Some of us have been waiting for answers. Some of us have been waiting for God to man, mo, uh, show up, show out, and manifest. We've been waiting for things to come. We've been believing God for And we have become weary. We've gotten tired. We you know, think, is it ever going to happen? You know, I thought I had a grip on it here. I thought this was going to happen here. I thought this was going to take place. And the weariness is trying to, let me tell you something. That weariness is the spirit of the world. It is in the world. People are becoming weary. We were prom you know, we got elections where we're promised this and we're promised that. And we're declared this and declared that. I think one of the last things was, some, you know, I mean, if some of you are finding out your, in your insurance is going out the roof. We're all supposed to say $2,500 a year each. It's going out the roof. It's gone up 30, 40%. People, I mean, people are losing their insurance. You know? And I mean, this isn't just one party. Politicians lie like a high on dog on a hot summer afternoon in the South. Amen. They'll tell you anything you want to hear just to get you to cast your vote for them. That's the way it works. They go up to Washington. They, they, they go up there all idealistic and get inside the belt line. All of a sudden, they become a politician. Hello. And, you know, they, and they tell you stuff. And people are, people are being promised this and promised that. And no matter what party gets in, you know, gets in charge and gets in this and gets in that, you, know, you, you, you think they're going to go and take care of this. And then they get up there and they, they, they just join right in with the whole thing. Because it's about power and it's about money. And then the people start to get weary. That weariness in the world is getting on the church. It's infiltrating the church. People in the church are becoming weary. They're becoming weary about life. And so we love messages that, that just make this tickle our ears. Hello? I don't have to tithe. I don't have to give. I don't have to go to church. I don't have to do this because God's going to do it anyway. And honey, you're deceived because God's not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. And so you got people who've given up on standing by faith, who've given up speaking the word, who've given up doing what the word of God says. And now that things aren't happening, they're getting weary. But I got a message for you this morning. Don't lose heart. I said, don't lose hearts. Glory to God. Don't give up. Hallelujah. And you know, guess what? God has not hocked the pearly gates to pay the note on the throne. Jesus is still Lord. God, his blood is still on the mercy seat. Hallelujah. The, eight, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders get up every once in a while and throw their crowns at his feet and they're still crying out, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Hallelujah. Take the, take the book and open the seals thereof. Glory to God. He ever lives to make intercession for you. He's still the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Don't lose heart today. Be encouraged that Jesus is Lord. Take up your place once again as a believer. Take up your place and make your confession. Decree what God's word says. Amen. I'm going to read those verses out of two different translations. Verses 7 and 9 out of the J.B. Phillips and verses, verse 8 out of the Connie Bear. I put them together and created a Connie Bear Phillips translation. Don't be under any illusion. You cannot make a fool of God. A man's harvest in life will depend entirely on what he sows. The man who now sows for his own flesh shall reap therefrom a harvest doomed to perish. That's why Satan wants to get you to give up. He wants you to start sowing to the flesh because he knows that, flesh, that, that harvest will perish. It'll not make it. It's like sowing fescue in eastern Carolina. It, fescue grass does not grow in eastern Carolina. It's too hot, hates it, it'll kill it. But he who sows for the Spirit shall from the Spirit reap the harvest of eternal life. Phillips goes on and says in verse 9, let us now, let us now not grow tired of doing good. For unless we throw in our hand 
the ultimate harvest, listen to this, is assured. Satan's trying to get you to give up before you get to the harvest. He's trying to get you to quit before you get the goods. He's trying to blind you to what's taking place. Jesus told us in, in the principle of seed time and harvest, he said it's first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. Can you imagine a farmer going out and tilling up the ground? Planting corn seed all out there for, you know, all over, you know, all these acres of corn seed. And he goes out there one day and there's little bitty grass blades coming up out of the ground. He goes, hey, it's working. And then that stalk comes up about here, then it gets up by here, then it gets up here, gets up here. He goes out there one day and goes, it ain't working. And goes out there and bulls and then just takes the plow and plows the whole thing down. Hey, stupid. You threw in your hand. You went too quick. You, do, you did not have patience to wait for the ultimate harvest. It's, it's coming. And if you'll just let nature take care of itself, you know, you're going to have the full corn in the ear. And you're, oh, can you imagine some silver queen sweet corn? Go take that home and shuck it. Some of, you, some of you may not even know what that is. You know, take that silk and pull it back. Get all that outside off. Get all that corn silk out of it. Cut that off. Hallelujah. You know, and then, then take it. I mean, they take a knife and cut it all off. Yeah. I mean, then you cook it. Put some butter and some salt and pepper on it. Right beside a piece of fried chicken. Mm. And some collards. Hallelujah. Cooked in ham hock meat. Glory to God. I'm telling you, get all that salt and that ham meat. Cook them collards down and chop them up. Put some sweet corn and some collards and some fried chicken. But next door, they don't have any corn on their plate because he cut the whole field down before they got the corn in the ear. Whenever this neighbor said, that corn planting don't work. Where, where'd that come from? I don't know. It didn't work for me. You got to see. You lost heart. We got too many Christians losing heart, growing weary, giving up before they get the harvest. And the greatest pressure comes. I said the greatest pressure comes right before it's time to harvest. Now, have you ever tried to go see the leaves change up in the mountains? I went three times this year. Because see what happens up there, if you live up there, you know this, and I have relatives who live up there. What happens is, you wake up one morning, and it's, it's peak. You might go to bed, and it's not peak. Wake up the next morning, and boom, there it is. Now, they say around the 15th, but that's just around the 15th. You, sometimes it's on the 20th, sometimes it's on the 12th, sometimes it's on the 5th, sometimes it's on the 29th. I mean, and you keep riding up there, you're hoping you catch peak. Okay? Because you, 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 you want to say, you know, if you catch it, I have caught it at peak a few times, and it's beautiful. Our mountains are gorgeous when you catch it at peak. I mean, it's beautiful, gorgeous. Look down, I mean, it's just gorgeous. A lot of people farm, they run out there, they run out there, they run out there. People run, they're putting their spiritual seed in the ground. They're running out there, they're running out there, and they wonder why I didn't hear it yet. Why haven't I gotten it yet? I ain't got it yet. Why don't I have it yet? Have I, why, why, why? You can't grow weary. Now, Jesus made it clear. The blade, the ear, the full corn in the ear. Stop trying to get your harvest in when it's the blade. Amen. You got a lot of people running out, wanting it to be harvested, and all you got is a blade. It ain't working. I just got to, no, 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 no. Give it time. Don't grow weary. I said, don't get tired. Don't throw in the hand. Then I get the ear. There's nothing in the ear. Well, the ear's got to get there so the corn can grow on it. The, the kernels can grow on it. We, we got a, a, a style of corn. You've probably seen it in the stores. We down, down in Eastern Carolina, we got relatives who call it peaches and cream. It's yellow and white corn on the same ear. <laughs> About ready to have a... I mean, you can hoop over that. I'm telling you right now. You know? I mean, you can have fun over that. But if you, if you pull that up too soon, you're not going to get your harvest. And we... Get wearied in well-doing. Don't lose heart. Don't lose your heart. Go back to what God said. God, what did Jesus say? 
How many have ever given to the kingdom of God? Have you ever sown money into the kingdom? Have you ever sown money into the kingdom? Tithe and gave money? You know what Jesus said? Who knows who Jesus is? Three of you. Anybody else know who Jesus is? Kind of like the head of the church? The second person of the Godhead? God manifest in the flesh? Do you think Jesus knows what he's talking about? Do you think Jesus would lie to you? Hey, God is not a man that he should lie. God can't lie. If God lied, Satan would be his father. Because the Bible says Satan is the father of all liars. So God can't lie. And Jesus, everybody say Jesus. The Lord Jesus, say the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, give. Now that's enough just because he said give for us to do it. No promises, no, no, give. But you know what he said after that? And it shall be given. How, to who? Unto you. How? Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Now, who said that? One of them prosperity preachers said that. I heard Creflo the other week saying that. Coping Ron came on right after he said it. That's a Cope and Creflo thing. No, it's a Jesus thing. Are you here? Jesus said it. So we got to get back to the confidence that the Lord said give. Everybody say, the Lord said give. And if the Lord said give and then he said what was going to happen when you gave, then that's what's going to happen. Unless you throw in the hand or throw in the towel. Hello? Don't stop the fight, Rocky. Don't stop the fight. Cut it, cut it. Get cut. Do whatever you got to do. Don't you throw in the towel. Don't you throw in your hand. Why? Because the ultimate harvest is assured. Why is the ultimate harvest assured? Does anybody know why? Because the Lord said so. I said the Lord said so. Not the prosperity preacher. The Lord said so. So what's that mean? The Lord said so. Guess what happens if the Lord said so? What he says comes to pass. Somebody out there shout. If the Lord said it, that's what's going to happen. If you don't throw in your hand, if you don't give up, if you don't quit, if you don't get here to this point and go, well, it just didn't work in the time frame I thought it should work in, I quit. Should have been here by now. Hello, you ever had a package coming from UPS or FedEx or DHL or somebody and, you, and you're out there and you thought it was supposed to be there at 9 o'clock, you got there at 3 in the afternoon and you're about ready to quit. Where's my package? Calling on me, you're on the internet. Where's my package? Let me give you an old country saying, hold on to your drawers. Hello? That's what we say. We say, hold on to your drawers. Now that's underwear for men or women, Drawers. That's what, we, that's what I, I don't know about you, but Eastern Carolina, that's what we call it. All right? Hold on just a little while. Stop growing weary. I mean, here you are. It's 9 o'clock. They go, show up at 3 o'clock. What difference did that make? Six hours difference. You still got it that day. And you got a lot of Christians who are throwing in the towel at 9 and the package showing up at 6, at 3. Six hours later. Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. Don't you lose your heart. You've sown, you've tithed, you've given, you've done what the God, word of God. And let me tell you something. Satan will pressure you to stop tithing and stop giving. That stuff ain't worth Well, what's that preacher doing with the money anyway? They're a bunch of money grabbing dogs. All they want is me to get that money so they can live and drive their, I don't have a Bentley and I don't have a Lexus and I don't have any of that stuff. All right? I don't even have a Cadillac. You know? But I, you know, the devil will come to you. What's, what are they doing with that money? What are they doing with your money? It ain't your money. Have you read your Bible? Malachi said that if you didn't tithe, God said, you robbed me. You took, you took my money. You start taking God's money. Didn't say it was the pastor's money. Didn't say it was the local church's money. Said it was God's money. You rob me. I don't want to be a God robber. 
All right, now let's get back to this. Don't lose your heart. Don't, you know, don't throw in your hand. Your ultimate harvest is assured. And the reason it's assured because the Lord promised it. Not just in money. If you'll believe, you'll receive. Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. Remember that? You know, Mark 11, 12, you know, as, uh, they were on their way into town, and they saw a fig tree. Jesus was hungry, saw a fig tree afar off. He came unto it, if he might find figs thereon. For the time of the figs was not yet. He got there and wanted nothing on it. Why did he go if there's not the time of the figs? Fig trees produce leaves at the same time they produce their figs. It's, 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 an, it's an anomaly with the fig tree. He saw, the, although it was out of season, there was leaves on it, and then it had figs. The fig tree lied to him. It said, I got figs. Jesus got there. He was hungry. Fig tree didn't have any, any, any figs on it. He said, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. What's that? There's no such thing as silent prayer. There's no such thing as silent confession. You got to speak it. Now, you don't have to scream it into your horse, but you got to speak it. They go on in the town, come back out, and it says on the morrow as they came by, Peter calling your members, say, behold, Master, behold, the fig tree you curse is withered away. Yep. Why? Because he spoke. Je now, did you notice that Jesus didn't stop as they were coming by the fig tree and going, oh, Lord, is it dead? Now, I, it's brown. Yeah, it's dead. I, the branches are brown. Yeah, he didn't stop and check the fig tree. Peter called to his remembrance. Why? Because he, 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 he knew that when he spoke, that was it. When he spoke, that was it. God's spoken. God said, if you'll give, it'll be given unto you. He said, if you'll bring the tithe into the storehouse, he's going to open heaven's windows. Now, King James says, open the windows of heaven and, and pour out. The, the margin, the Hebrew says, he's going to empty out on you a blessing. You won't have room enough to receive. What's that mean? There's not going to be enough to take care of it. You don't have room enough to take care of it. I like blessings like that. Janie told me how to make, uh, make chili. We had chili yesterday. She said, well, buy six cans of this, six cans of that, you know, two pounds of hamburger, you know, this, that, and that. So I make, I put it in my crock pot. I got another half a crock pot more. <laughs> Shannon, go to Jesse's house. I, you're going to have to get the crock. They're in a movie. They're watching. Ding, 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 Jim's bond. Anyway, so they go, she goes and gets a crock pot, bring it back. I fill up three-fourths of another crock pot with chili. I had good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. We all, all seven of us ate two bowls. I mean, we gorged, and I got a quart left over. See, the blessings of God do not come like Lay's potato chips. Yeah, they're all there. Take your bag home, open it up, and it goes, whoosh, and you look down there, and there's chips down here in a bag this big. There's chips down here like this. God's not Lay's potato chip company. Or even, or even Pringles. There's air in there. <laughs> He's Pastor Ed packing your barbecue to go. I used to work at Parks. We had the paper containers back then. Y'all been in those old restaurants that had the paper takeout containers, not the plastic ones. They used to have little house stars all over and that kind of stuff. You could get a pound and a half in a pound container because the bottom would bulge down and the top would bulge up. Now, this is B.C. Anybody know what B.C. is? Before Christ. People that came out I knew, I could pack a pound of them. <laughs> Couldn't even get the lid on there. It's just, you know, grease is running out, you know, because it's, it's, it's Eastern-style barbecue. Pound and a half of barbecue. Good measure, pressed down, shaking. Yeah, are you getting hungry? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you ever had down east barbecue? Oh, you've missed half your life. Anyway, should have been here. You should have been here last week, man. <laughs> We're glad you're here this week, though. Jesus said, give. Everybody say, Jesus said, give. Jesus said, give. I gave and it didn't work. You just threw in your towel. You just threw in your hand. You just quit. You quit. Because Jesus said, if you'll give, it'll be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. I ain't seen nothing. Well, you better get in faith. You're being moved by what you see. You're being moved by timetables. He said that the, if you don't throw in your hand, the ultimate harvest is assured. Everybody say assured. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you say amen? 
Most people relate the, the, the scripture, verse 7, to sowing and reaping of, uh, you know, in the realm of good and bad deeds towards others. That is true. But I believe the context is talking about sowing and reaping in life. The spiritual state you're in today is a result of what you sowed yesterday. Hello? Deuteronomy 30 says, in verse 15 through 20, See, I have set before you this day life and death. I mean, life and good, good, death and evil. Now, let me say something here. Everybody says, well, God's in charge of everything. No, he set before us life and good, death and evil. It's set before you. Now, when we sit down at the table, a lot of times, now, Janie, Janie cooks some things I don't like. I don't like squash. I don't like Brussels sprouts. Hello? And she ain't never put chitlins on my table, and she never will, because I ain't going to have anything on my table you can't even smell to cook, can't stand to smell cooking. I went to my grandma's one time. She's cooking chitlins. We, me and my dad and brother got in the car and drove away and said two hours we stayed away from the house. And came back, and it still smelled like chitlins. People say, they taste good. How could something that smells so bad taste so good? Even down in South Carolina where they had the Chitlin Festival, they cook them in another town 30 miles away because they wouldn't have anybody come to the festival if they cooked them there. Now, if you eat chitlins, God bless you. Please don't invite me over for some. I ain't going to eat them. The Bible says he was put before you. Uh, it won't be put before me because I'll move. <laughs> now, God says he set before us. Now, we, we sit down at the table, and, you know, we'll put on there, we'll put mashed potatoes on there, we'll put, you know, we, we, love, we love country cooking, you know. We'll put mashed potatoes and, you know, we'll put cabbage or collards and corn and sweet potatoes. We got us some Eastern Carolina sweet potatoes. Oh, man, they're good. Cook them, and the sugar just running out of them. That, that Eastern Carolina soil just cooks them some kind of good. Yeah, just, just peel them. Mm. I mean, I'd be like a, it's like you don't need to add nothing to them because they just, they're just amazing. And have some sweet potatoes. You know, have some hamburger steak and gravy or have some fried chicken or have some uh, fried pork chops. Glory to God. And it's all set before me. And then Janie put on there, you know, she might have, won't put some, some squash, cook an onion and butter. She'll cook squash and onion and butter and cook it down. And, and I'm sitting there looking at it. And I pass it. I didn't choose that. Now, God has set before us a table. And he says there's good and there's life. There's death and there's evil on that table. Now, choose. Then he says this, therefore, choose life. Hello? He, t he tells you what's on the table, then he tells you what to choose. Hello? You, 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 you've been, how, how many ever grew up in church where you, we had what they call homecomings or, you know, the, the, and everybody in church bring food, you know? They put it at the tables, and they got, everybody tries to outdo everybody with their recipe. Yeah. But usually there's somebody in the church that can't cook. Y'all yeah. know what I'm talking about. And you look at all that, and, I, and I'm telling you, in the, if we're in the South, so one of the main dishes on that table is going to be some fried chicken and some macaroni and cheese, <laughs> some cornbread, hallelujah, you know, I mean, some pot roast. You don't, you don't get any, you don't get any, those old country places, you don't get any of these uppity dishes. Okay? You know, kale, that's right. You don't get enough of that. You don't get tofu burgers. I mean, these country folk know how to cook. Are y'all here? But there's always that one family in the church that everybody knows can't cook. Pause the camera for a second, Bill. When I, turn it back on. <clears throat> I'd get in line. I wouldn't get stuff from that particular family. <laughs> I'd go to the other families. <laughs> yeah. Lord have mercy. Best meal of the year. Now, that family got smart. They started going to Parker's and buying the fried chicken and bringing it. Then, then you, because Parker's had good fried chicken. So, 
uh, you know, start buying it instead of, instead of cooking it. Because anyway. But you, 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 everybody knows who the bad. So what they'll do is say, visitor comes. Aaron, come here. Aaron. There's a table right here, man. They got all this fried chicken, got all this food. Like, Look at all that. See that one right there? Mm-hmm. Don't get it. <laughs> okay, man, enjoy yourself. Don't get that one. <laughs> and that's exactly what God did. He said, I'm setting for you good and life, death and evil. Choose, hey, choose life. <laughs> that might look good. You want the good in life. That death and evil, <coughs> it's dressed up. Hello? I mean, that, that ain't even fried chicken, man. It's tofu. Shaped like fried chicken. Are you here? Come on now. God has told us what to do. See, why? He doesn't want you to lose heart. He doesn't want you to get wore out. He doesn't want you to get weary. So stop. forget about the bad stuff. Do what God said do and hold fast your profession of faith. He's faithful that promised. Don't throw in the towel. Don't quit because he said it's going to happen. Amen. He said. He said. Now what's this called? The life of faith. What? You believe God. You believe what God said. Everything around you says it's not going to happen. God said it will. God said, that's what's going to happen. Now, Satan's at, now listen, in the realm of finances, Satan's after your money. You tried that. You tried. You don't try anything in the kingdom. You do. Yoda had it right. He must have been reading the Bible. Try not. Do or do not. I was, I was, this Winston, this one I asked who had ever seen Star Wars. We had three people there who had never seen a Star Wars movie. Wow. Anybody here? Never seen? Never seen. Never seen a Star Wars? Wow. What's in it for you? You understand all my, all my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it just opened up a whole new world to you when I say stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. There you go. So go see him. You'll you understand, you understand the Yoda thing. You know? We don't try to live by faith. The, ju- the Bible did not say, the just shall try to live by faith. So the just shall live by faith. Jesus didn't say try giving. You know? You don't try life. You, don't, you, you do life. You don't try giving. You give. You don't try to live by faith. You live by faith. And what's living by faith? God said, you know, in the realm of finances, he said, give and it shall be given. Now the devil will come to you and say, ah, you don't have to do that stuff. You, know, you don't have to obey the Bible. Yeah, 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 yeah. As a matter of fact, they just, they don't even handle your money. They, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. Really? You accept an exact accusation from a voice running around your head? It's just the devil. Why? Because he knows that Jesus said it. And he knows that if you do what Jesus said, and he knows that if you do what Jesus said in faith, and you don't throw in the hand, but you stay faithful to it, and stay faithful to it, that the ultimate harvest is assured. And he knows that when the prosperity starts showing up on your doorstep, and you start walking in the land of full supply and overflow, you're going to give more. And you're going to do more for the kingdom. And you're going to be more of a blessing to the kingdom. And more people are going to get saved. So what's he going to try to do? Cut you off. Get you to throw in your towel. Get you to throw in your hand before the harvest gets here. Now, what happened? Now, remember uh, 2 Corinthians, I believe, around chapters 8 and 9. He says this. He said he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater and multiplies your seed sown and increases the fruits of your righteousness. Now, what's that mean? God gives you the seed to sow and then feeds you while you're waiting for harvest to come in. What happens if you tear up your harvest and throw it away? You're going to run out of food. Because he gave you substance. He, he gave you bread to eat until the harvest got there. You go out and tear the harvest up, you don't get to eat. Satan's out to destroy you coming and going. He wants you to quit. But the, but the Amplified Bible says don't lose your heart. Don't lose heart. Don't get wearied. Don't get tired. Don't struggle. Oh, God, I ain't ever going to make it. Oh, God, we're never going to see it. 
You know, the Apostle Paul on that ship, when they had been, you know, they had been, um, they got uh, stranded on a reef, and they were getting beat all to pieces, and the angel of the Lord came down to him and said, fear not. The ship's going to be lost, but you won't lose any of the people on the boat. And he goes up to the captain of the ship and says, uh, the, the stood by me this night, the angel of the Lord. And he said that we'll, although we'll lose the ship, we won't lose anybody on the ship. And this is the next statement he makes. Wherefore, brethren, I believe God. I believe God. That should have got a runner. That should have, I mean, I'm telling you, wherefore, I believe God. Who's report? Will you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. Whose report? Will you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. Amen. What's God's report? Well, God says I'm healed. God says I'm prosperous. God says I'm delivered. God says I'm blessed. God's, God's got a lot of things to say about you. Amen. Now, whose report are you going to believe? Because the devil's got a lot of things to say too. You ain't ever going to make it. You ain't ever going to get a harvest. As a matter of fact, you plant a corn, you're going to get tomatoes. I don't want tomatoes. It don't matter. You planted the corn, you're going to get tomatoes. You can't get tomato out of corn seed. See, you may as well go dig it up because you ain't going to get no corn. The devil lied to you. Yeah, you, did, you, you did what that, pre that preacher said, that Jesus said give. You ain't going to get nothing. You ain't going to get nothing. You may as well go dig it up. Build something else on that property because you ain't going to get no harvest out of, that, out of that garden. Somebody with me here? We, gotta be, we, can't, we can't grow weary. We can't grow tired. Amen? We got to stay faithful. Amen? In the day, in the day the, I commanded this day to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, his statutes, his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord shall bless thee in the land where, whether you go to possess it. And then he talks about turning your heart. You know, we're not going to turn our heart. Amen? We need to be led by the Spirit. Verse 8 says this, reveals that the believer can sow in two different realms of life. You can sow in good seed or bad seed. You can sow to the flesh or you can sow to the Spirit. Satan wants to get you sowing to the flesh so bad he can't hardly stand it. He'll tempt you with every kind of temptation he can bring. Men, are you listening to me now? Are you listening to me real good? That harlot, ratchet, strumpet, Hello, here you are, 60 years old, and you look like, you know, you, know, you got Dunlap's disease. What's that? Your belly done, done, done lapped over your belt. You got chest in drawer disease. What's that? Your chest done dropped down into your drawers. And you think you're some hot stuff with your shirt unbuttoned down here, showing some gray hair with your gold chains on. You're going through the midlife crisis. You go out and get your expensive car, and then some babe comes looking at you. Hello. What, what did my son say? Huh? Don't want to, I don't want to know. We're going to have a talk when we get home, son. Here you are, and she's looking at you, and you know what she sees? She sees money bags. She nothing but a high class hoe. Are you here? She's planning on packing up your, your marriage and shipping it out and getting all your money and, and maybe feeding you some arsenic while you're eating at night. And you stupid enough to think she's got the hots for you. You didn't attract a woman like that when you were 20. What makes you think now you're 70, you're going to get one? <laughs> you in the gym every other day. I mean, you tan, you got the hair, you got everything right, you're doing all the right stuff, and she ain't looking at you. But now you got money, I was thinking, all of a sudden, you're 70, 50 years old and you've got money, they're looking at you. They are an emissary of the devil sent to destroy your life. Now, you, you listen. You read your Bible. Don't, don't let those strange lips lead you home. Don't let them. They're, they're, they're sent by the devil to destroy you and to disrupt you and to mess up your life. Well, you, you sow to your spirit. 
You sow to the word. Amen. I mean, Jesus even went as far as to say, if you look at it to lust after, you've already committed adultery. But he put the bar, sorry, he, he got the bar from actually committing adultery just to thinking about it. Right. See? So what, what's he trying to do? He's trying to get us to keep sowing to the spirit, not to the flesh. Right. And number one, nobody wants to see your nasty gray chest hair. <laughs> I don't care if it's encased with gold. Hello, your old wrinkly skin where you've been to the tanning booth. I, anybody want to see that mess? <laughs> Hello? And you think you're some hot dude. See, what are you doing? You're just opening yourself up to sow to the flesh. You're trying to, you're trying to, you know, listen. Conduct yourself in modesty. Conduct yourself as a godly man. And I'm, I'm talking, I ain't messing with the women right now. I'm just talking to the men. Because they get old and they, some of these old guys start thinking, that, you know, oh God, you know, I, I want me a young babe. You're going to have a heart attack? <laughs> Trying to keep up with her? It's probably what she wants you to have a heart attack. Sow to your spirit. Sow to the things of God. Sow your heart there. Conduct yourself with propriety and godliness. Amen? Be an example to the younger men so they want to grow up and be a godly man like you. Yes. Amen. Amen. And what happens when you sow to the spirit? You love the spirit to reap life. God's going to bring blessings to you. Good things are going to happen in your life when you sow into your spirit. We ain't going to mess with the women this week. We went over. Everybody was always picking on the women, you know. We ain't going to pick on the women this week. All right? But you don't need to be a cougar. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> going to go get me a young man. He's just like them ratchet young women. They want your money. They know you old. You got your, you got your, husband's, you got your husband's life insurance policy. They wait for you to kick over too. <laughs> Hello? We have got to stop making provision to the flesh. Why? Because you'll rule the flesh reap corruption. And so to our spiritual life. Because we'll reap the ultimate harvest if we do. Amen? We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.